This week on Maker Update, a hoverboard for witches, laser cut zodiac, a starburst display, thread plotting, wobbling oloids, and interactive trees. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I know it's August, but I've been already thinking about Halloween, wondering about like what we as makers can do to save Halloween, because man, I want Halloween to happen. Um, I don't know what the answer is, but I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are on it. It's just what I've been thinking about. Uh, I've also been thinking about this week's project of the week, which hopefully you can get made before Halloween comes around. On the Make Anything channel, Devin Montez has a video up on how he made this motorized witch's broom that can push him around on a skateboard or roller skates. To make this work, he's hacked one of these motor shoes, which were part of the hoverboard fad, it's basically a hub motor and a battery pack with a tilt sensor that throttles the motor depending on how far you tilt it. To adapt this to run on the end of a broomstick, Devin created this 3D printed mount. One piece acts as a base plate that screws down where your foot would normally go. Then another piece screws on, which allows you to connect the threaded end of a painter's pole and gives you some adjustment over the angle of the stick. It's a clever design, especially the way he built in these slots for the washers to drop into. The STLs for these designs are available on my mini factory. That said, even though it's a fun hack, unless you already have this specific model of hover shoe, you might do better to shop for individual e-scooter parts and build something similar from scratch. It sounds like this version is pretty hard to control, and a simple scooter throttle might remedy that. Then again, maybe a witch's broom is supposed to have a mind of its own. Now for more projects. Frank Chow made this awesome laser cut Ori. This is a mechanical depiction of planetary rotation from a time before we realized that planets take elliptical orbits. As a toy though, it's pretty fun and I love all these little details for the moon phases and the zodiac signs. You can find the files to make your own over on Frank's GitHub page. Have you ever heard of a starburst display? These are traditionally a 14 segment alphanumeric digit and one of the rarest and weirdest are used in the F-18 Hornet fighter jet, which look almost like a dot matrix digit. Mangus Tyrannus challenged himself to make a version in the same style, using surface mount LEDs and a grid of holes to mask and diffuse the lights. The design uses a custom PCB with a 595 shift register to drive the LEDs from an Arduino. From his Hackaday post, it sounds like he's open to share the source files if he asks for them. By way of Evil Mad Scientist, I found out about Thread Plotter, a toolkit for adapting an XY plotter into a punch needle embroidery machine. This is a project from Shi King He and Eat Nadar. They're using an Axid Draw plotter and the API from Evil Mad Scientist. They go over how to modify the machine and how to create the designs. I'll be honest, I didn't think this was going to excite me that much until I watched the video. Now I kind of want a little embroidery bot. I'm less convinced about the next robot, but how could I not talk about this thing? The Moving Oloid by Jan Ingo Haller and Lauren Samaja is an Arduino-based robot with an unusual mechanism to help it move. Because of its unique shape, the design naturally wants to move forward and backwards. All it needs is a little momentum provided by these weighted servo arms that slowly move back and forth. A little fabric cover makes it look less weird, sorta. I can at least say I've never seen anything like it. Another project that surprised me this week is the Here Tree by Helen Kwok and Israel Carter. What they've done is turn a tree into an interactive sound installation. You press a panel mounted on the tree with LED rings inside, which activates the system, and then you go around touching the different ropes hanging from the branches. Each rope has a conductive thread entwined with it so that it can sense your touch and respond by playing back an audio file. It's a neat idea, and if you can find a way to make it solar powered and weatherproof, it could be a neat thing to have in your yard. You could turn a backyard tree into a giant MP3 player. Time for some tips and tools. On the TechPod podcast, Chris Arlington wrote in with a tip on using a closet shoe organizer to store and organize your cables. If you have a tangle of audio cables, USB cables, power adapters, this could be a great hack for organizing them. I imagine it might also work for zip ties, LED strip, or even lightweight tools. For around $10, I might give it a shot. On Tested, you may have understandably passed up this video on how Adam Savage built a rolling rack for his lathe chucks. It's a niche problem he's solving for in a long video, but it's also a chance for you to see a master like Adam fail and get humbled. 
I won't spoil it, but it's a great reminder to mark your material with cut lines before you cut, even if you have a jig or a system in place that logically should put the cut where you want it. The $349 Prusa Mini 3D printer is one of the most talked about machines of the year, but does it deliver on the quality and ease of use that you'd expect from Prusa? On his channel, Thomas Sandlatter has an exhaustive and mostly positive review of the machine. Still, definitely worth a shot if you were considering getting one. On the Cool Tools channel, Sean Michael Reagan shows off this double punch that uses a spring to drive a mark into your material. This is a $10 tool that provides a prick punch on one side and a center punch on the other. I have to admit, I've never used a prick punch before, so the video is worth a watch just to learn the difference. There were a couple of neat 3D prints I came across on the Adafruit blog. The first was this print and place spring loaded box by Turbo Sunshine. The lid and box and gear mechanism all print as a single piece, but Sunshine also includes the mechanism design as a separate piece that you can incorporate into your own designs. It's a neat trick. Another practical design comes from Let's Print. It's a series of four different water pump turbines that you can attach to the D shaft of a DC motor. On his video, he goes over each design variation and what shapes produce the best output. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their video on how to repair broken traces on a circuit board. This is a good skill to know about for fixing up old boards that may have peeling traces. It's also a good skill for hacking or deliberately rewiring boards where you need to cut traces on purpose to make what you want. Check it out. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. I'm still looking for ideas for hands-free Halloween candy delivery. You can get on the Maker Update email list so you never miss a show. Big thanks to my patrons on Patreon. And an extra special big thanks to DigiKey Electronics for really making this show possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.